Good morning, YouTube. How about we have a cup of coffee this morning, and uh, I'm going to quickly get some sweet potatoes going. In the uh, this is probably going to be the last batch of sweet potatoes going to go into the uh, pressure cooker over here. They'll have to cook for at 10 pounds for 90 minutes. Usually that's what I go looking on. Uh, <laughs> YouTube for uh, recipes for is because I want to know how long and what uh, what pressure to cook them at. Uh, a lot of that I don't remember. I just get it off of YouTube or I look it up on in the ball blue book and sometimes it's just easier to look it up on YouTube. I gotta go to the store and get some more coffee. Now, these guys do not sponsor me in any way. But you see that French Market coffee? If they ever felt like sending me a case of this stuff, it would last me a year. A can of this lasts a long time. You use half as much, you get twice as rich of aroma and flavor, and twice the caffeine kick. So if you ever want to, send me a can of this, it'll be fine with me. Look up my address and send it right on to me. Anyway, uh, let me get get started here. I'm waiting on my lunch to come out of the oven. I washed my dishes. Got my dishes started this morning. Early, early before I even got out of bed. So these are hot and sterilized. Ooh, they are hot. So we're going to load these up. These have been soaking overnight. And I firmly suggest, I raw pack my sweet potatoes. Uh, I try to do everything the easiest way I possibly can. Forgive the glare back there. That's the, the uh, fall sun. Uh, it is morning time here. Still a little bit. You just want to pack them just as good as you can. You're going to find that I don't do a lot of things. And I'll tell you why I don't do a lot of things that, that other people do. I'm not going to stir these with a stick and probe them for air. Once I fill them up with water, I let them sit for just a minute. More than just a minute, but I let them sit long enough that the air bubbles come out of them. And that's just up to you. You're not the one that's eating them. I am. Uh, I've never got anything, but I use it. I leave a, about an inch of head space with my food here, my sweet potatoes. All right, and then. Uh, Oh shoot. Hey, blooper number one. Nope, self. I need to uh, I need to screw that dish up. I don't understand what Linda's talking about. The dishwasher just rode a wheelie. The tray comes sliding out. Anyway, nothing on YouTube or any of the canners that I've found said anything about soaking sweet potatoes, but I know for a fact whenever I cut up french fries or something like that, because we eat real french fries around here, I uh, cut my taters up, and then I soak them, I don't know, if I can for an hour. 15, 20 minutes is, is feasible. And to get starch out of them. Well, uh, no, potatoes do not absorb water. Uh, <laughs> that was a discussion we had around here yesterday. But they do not absorb water. These potatoes are just as hard as they were. When, they will absorb a little water whenever you cook them. They will do that. 
these aren't cooked. These are raw. So, yes, definitely cut your sweet potatoes up, put them in uh, cold water, cool water, and let them soak for about an hour. Before you get started packing them in your jars, you won't have it build up a starch that's in them. And uh, you have clean, pretty water whenever you reach in to pick them out. out uh, these soak pretty much all uh, all afternoon yesterday. And then whenever I run out of time last night for canning, uh, I put them in this, this bucket. And uh, and uh, put them in the refrigerator overnight. Let them get ready for the day. I'll finish up today. And uh, this is the last seven I've got. 14 made over here. I made two batches last night. I have two canners. And uh, while one was cooling off, I had the other one in the, on the stove cooking. There's three. But this come off of, I had three 20 gallon uh, syrup buckets that I drilled holes in the bottom of and uh, set them out at the end of my garden and uh, they uh, I put sweet potatoes uh, in them that I had bought last winter at the store bought them strictly for that intention they were small sweet potatoes and uh, mainly what I got was small sweet potatoes but I have a bucket or pan over here that's just full of little small sweet potatoes that I'm gonna plant for next year. These won't have the the uh, stuff to keep them from sprouting sprayed on them, so they might do a little better this next year. But I ended up with about two five-gallon bucketfuls of sweet potatoes. That's not an enormous uh. harvest but it is good for me and Linda I mean me and Linda don't eat sweet potatoes that much mainly on Christmas and Thanksgiving but now we'll have some whenever we have a eat and greet at the church we'll have some to uh, we can change up our varieties of stuff that we carry we try to carry people up there fresh good stuff I usually cook greens or something like that and carry and uh, so far, I have not even thought about planting a winter garden. You know, everybody uh, at the beginning of the pandemic was worried about food shortages and stuff like that. I think everyone, including the government, thought that it was going to be worse than what it is. And now a lot of the government thinks that... Uh, it's worse now than, or it's scarier and worse now than it was in March. Well, listen, uh, if you guys have lost loved ones or friends, I'm very sorry. Um, they're in a better place. They really are. Um, we are experiencing technical difficulties within our nation. And I hope with our coming election, that no matter what happens in the election, that everyone will decide to come together for our nation's sake. Because if not, we might as well give up. Might as well just give up. <sighs> Let the commies have it because that's where we're headed. Anyway, that's the end of my political thought. So, 
please. Whatever. No, it's not the end of it. Whatever political affiliations you hold, keep it to yourself. But uh, I'm asking you that if your party does not win the election, to accept it. And us all learn to live together because this is the United States of America. And uh, it's an awesome country. It's an awesome country. For some reason or another, it wronged you. I'm sorry. I don't know how it could wrong you any worse than I've ever been wrong. Anyway, we're going to get these sweet potatoes finished packing here. We're going to get them. One more jar. Remember to hit that like button. Subscribe. You're not going to hear me talk about politics or anything else. Uh, as to that, that, that matter. And there won't be no political discussions on the on the board. I'll take that down immediately. But please, like, ring the bell, subscribe, and uh, go over and like my Facebook page too. gonna get a teaspoon of salt in each one Fill them up a half inch above or below the lid line. And uh, for the simple matter, the potatoes will absorb lots of water. I'm making a mess with the water here, but I can clean it up. Lunch is ready. Okay, those are all full. Now, 
Cardinal Rule, number one. A clean wash rag. Do not use paper towels. Don't use bleach or vinegar or anything else to wipe your rings off, to wipe your seal off. This right here is 100%, 100% clean. It is 100% effective. I would almost bet my last on it. So use this right here. Dip it in water, wash the, the ring off. Because for the simple fact, I have found, I have tried all of those ways. I use bleach and paper towels, not bleach, but I use vinegar and paper towels. And I would have, with jelly or anything, I would have losses. I couldn't tell you what percentage of my losses, but I would have losses. And that is work. When it comes down to it, when you lose something, when you lose a portion of seven, seven will take care of you for seven weeks. That's seven weeks worth of sweet potatoes right there. If you have them once a week. So if you lose set, half of them, that's half your food. So, let me turn that timer off. And uh, so there you go. But I have not ever lost one where I used water and a real rag. Those are not quite ready. Put them on for five more minutes. I'm eating the big pound of hog today. Fish sticks. I know it ain't very healthy, but I sure like them. All right, let me get my lids here. Yes, 100%. I mean, I very, very rarely lose one. And I went and poured a whole jar of pickles out. It's the only jar I carried to the family reunion. Uh, bread and butter pickles I made uh, two years ago. Uh, everything should have been great with those. All right. So this burner right here needs to be blown out. So I have to light it with a match. I'm going to put that on just a little under medium. Move my pressure cooker there. And turn the back burner off. And let's get started packing them in here. So, I mean, I, and, and I looked at them whenever I got to the, to the family reunion. I said, oh, no. And whenever I pulled the lid on it, it didn't have a real hard seal. It didn't pop when I pulled it loose. They were dark. And whenever I, whenever I tasted one of them, they were kind of mushy. They didn't have no crunch to them. And I was like, this ain't sealed. So I walked over to the fence and poured them out for the ants to eat. What else can you do? So anyhow, that was back in my days when I first started canning. And most likely I used a paper towel with vinegar on it. It'll work. But the water with a cherry cloth rag works every time. Or diaper. I, I usually buy diapers of, uh, you know, the good old fashioned reusable diapers. I, I like to buy a bunch of them. When my grandkids are born, I give my kids big wads of them. That way they've got them. They don't use them. They use pampers, you know, because, I mean, face it, that's the best way to go. Uh, but... Those cloth diapers work good for spit ups and clean ups and everything else. And whenever you get, whenever they get dirty, you throw some bleach on. Yes, bleach. Oops, that's what. That and uh, wash them in the wash machine. Make tea with this water. 
We got them all on there. I'm going to grab my weight. I bought this for $15 at, a, at an estate sale. It's awesome. It's a mirror magic. I don't know what year it is. It's clear. Valve works. Valve works. It only holds seven jars, but you know, compared to my Presto, it'll hold seven jars too. It's bigger, uh, but it will hold, uh, you can't stack pints on it. That makes a lot of difference. On way, Jack. It should slide on smoothly. Turn that puppy up. Got my weight right here. We're going to put it on 10 pounds. We're going to let it vent 10 minutes first. And I'm going to leave y'all with it and let y'all watch it because I want y'all to see what the vent looks like when it starts to vent. All right, I'm going to go eat lunch. Maybe talk with you guys for a minute. I'm going to grab my bread. My ketchup and my coffee. How about some hot sauce? So much good hot sauce I was bragging about the other day. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna eat, and uh, I'm not gonna eat in front of you guys, and because uh, <laughs> there's a little swamp to fish it. And then I'm gonna leave y'all with it and watch it vent. It shouldn't take about 10 minutes and you'll see this thing start rocking. If you want to, you can fast forward through this. Because after it vents, I'm gonna turn it off. That's gonna be the end of the video. So tell me about what you guys like to do down in your comments below. Uh, do you have vegetables that you like to can? Do you buy them from the grocery store? You know, this this is not a not a, a site for um, insults or anything like that. So let's keep it clean. Let's keep it clean for the kids. I can respect YouTube's policy about the kids. Because, yeah, I got kids, and I want them raised better. That's the reason I watch YouTube and and, uh, and Hulu shows and stuff like that because of the simple fact that I can, I can pick and choose what I watch. And if something comes on with a bunch of filthy talking or something like that, I can turn it off and go find something else. Lord, what we are teaching our children today, or what uh, other people is teaching our children today, is pathetic. It is absolutely pathetic. That's our next generation. Has anyone seen the crow? Or the crow too? And how they lived in that movie? That's pretty much where they're taking our country right now. No morals. None at all. No religion. Mm. Watch pot 
never boiled. This pot will shake on the stove. I want to say the previous owner uh, might have used it outside, outdoors, with a big uh, propane, like a fish cooker or something. The kind of, because the bottom is kind of bulged out just a little bit. Like it might have got in just a little bit too much pressure. It still works great. But when it really gets to rolling, uh, boiling real hard, it'll rock on that stove just a little bit. I noticed it last night. But for $15, I am not going to complain. My other one cost me $85. So. Mm. White hot sauce is good. It got me sweating in the morning. I am absolutely not sure but I think opening weekend of deer season is or opening day of deer season is tomorrow. If it's not, it's for the youth. I don't even have a place picked out to hunt. I live in the edge of the David Crockett National Forest and uh I hunt the National Forest and it's just, it's way overcrowded on the opening weekend. And uh, as old as I am now, I'm not a spring chicken like I used to be. I used to could walk for miles and miles and miles and, and was was an excellent tracker and, and uh, And, and a navigator. I can navigate myself through the woods without a compass. Nowadays, I can't walk this much because uh, I guess I got something wrong with my legs. But, uh, and I'm fat. So, walking is really my, uh, uh, I have to be very careful about where I, I, have to, I can't just go hunt anywhere. Not only sitting next to somebody who lives in downtown Houston. And I don't. Dislike anybody from Houston. But. They don't respect. Anyone. These people that hunt in the National Forest. They do not respect other people. They right, say, so, well, it's a free force. We can hunt wherever we want to. But, Lord, when you see somebody's truck sitting there, don't get out of your truck and go walk over the top of them. It's fun disrespect. I have spot that I hunt in that are the same spots that my father carried me and my uncles carried me and my brothers carried me when I was just a little kid. And I didn't just find them. I kind of think of it as my spot. But I know everybody's welcome. And I have my favorite spots. I do. And it's not because they've got big animals or, or lots of animals or anything like that. Maybe there's a certain tree that I like to walk beside that makes memories for me. Like one memory, I was walking into a stand one day and I smelled something stunk. Smell like cat, like a cat's litter box. And what's it smell like a cat's litter box? A mile and a half down in the woods. 
and I get to a low hanging tree. You know, a tree that's growing over the old tree that's growing over the the trail. There's a big a deer scrape right there up underneath that uh, lowest hanging tree limb. And now uh, this tree is probably 10 or 12 inches in diameter at the first limb. So, pretty big tree. It's just been ridden down by the winds or whatever over the years. Well, I look up in that tree, there's a freaking cougar sitting in it. Crouch. Up in the fork of this tree, waiting on a deer to come visit that scrape. They're there. Game will tell you, ah, oh, you better take a picture of some of my eyeballs for that. As soon as that cat spotted me, I tried to get a shot on it, and it was quick. It come out of that tree, jumped 20 feet, and was gone out in the woods. I've had two other encounters with big cats. So whenever you guys come down here and hunt in David Crockett National Forest, be careful. Be leery of what's in these woods. It'll surprise you. And for all you Bigfoot fans out there, He is the 2020 hide and seek champion, that's for sure. But I ain't seen hide the hair of him. I never have. Still no stain. That's been 10 minutes. Y'all get out there in the National Forest and you four wheeler quits. You won't run. Give me a call. We'll come get it. Out of the woods for you. And uh fix it. We'll figure out what's wrong with it. Put you back on the trail. We'll come to your deer lease, your house, your grandma's house, your uncle's house, it don't matter. When I was going to technical school, I used to laugh at Shady tree mechanics. And they have a point. Because a lot of shade tree mechanics don't know what they're talking about. Don't know what they're doing. They may be good twisting nuts and bolts. But they ain't no good at diagnostics or anything else. Future. Anyway, it's getting hot in here.
My wife, Linda, she was scared to death of that thing. That pressure cooker. It was always the first time for everything. First couple times I used my pressure cooker, I was scared of it. Pressure tanner, whatever. But I went by the instructions to the T. And uh, was very vigilant over it. I'm sitting here right now watching. Waiting for it. It's going to take a little longer. Them sweet potatoes are cold. The water I put in the sweet potatoes is hot. But the sweet potatoes themselves are cold. I hope that's not no jar scratching in there. Wouldn't that be something? You might want to make sure you come back and watch the rest of the video to uh, find out. We got a hundred percent or not. Whew, I feel better now. And I knew that I would. I feel good. It's Friday morning now. Like it should. Alright. You ain't just sit. Yeah. <laughs> Pig. Speaking of which, I was supposed to be a guy uh, called me and he was trapping pigs. Was, oh, I see steam. So at that point right there, you got 10 minutes. Let's mark 10 minutes on the timer. about three fish sticks too many. I'm kind of embarrassed. This is mine and Linda's first year to be married. We dated all through the winter last year. But uh, I've never been a broke person. And I'm not broke now. But I do not have a job. I have this company. But I ain't working. My truck ain't moved in seven days. That phone needs to ring, people. It needs to ring. I ain't praying that none of you break down, but I'm praying that you'll call to get something fixed. Let's get them lawnmowers serviced. Let's get them ready for the winter time so they can sit there and they'll be ready for next spring. Whenever you get them out, they'll have fresh blades, a brand new air filter, a brand new fuel filter, brand new spark plugs. Yes, ma'am. And have that gas run out of it and drain. That way it will be ready for next spring when springtime comes and you're ready to fire up and go. All you'll need is brand new fresh gasoline in and check that oil. Because that is important, important, important. Mm-hmm. 
steaming good now. That's almost down to the bottom of the bottle, see? Yeah. Some of that homemade hot sauce. Some of that good Tabasco peppers. Go back and watch my habanero video. You want to see some awesome habaneros? We chopped up scorpion. I put 25 scorpions in a five gallon bucket with jalapenos and habaneros. That's just a little above medium heat in a turbo burner. So if there's something that you want to see me can, something you want to see me work on, diagnose, anything. I mean, I do a lot of things. If you want to see me build a uh, I don't know. If you want to see me build something out of wood, let me know. I'm not as in practice, as in tune with uh, the lumber like I used to be. I used to be a, a very, very good carpenter. So let me know what you want to see. Linda might come up with a project for me next week. Who knows? I told her I was going to build shelves for all these jars of food that we got. So we could clean up our bedrooms. They're not dirty. They're well organized, but you come to visit. Instead of looking at nice paintings on the wall, you looking at the at the canned goods that we got. As soon as, as soon as I get some service calls, I'm going to start making more videos, more repair videos. But uh, until then, it's kind of, we're going to have to put it on hold. I've had several phone calls over the last couple of days. They were wrong numbers. Uh, I try to be productive when I'm around the house, so I'll try to do something. I'm not, I didn't get out of the house yesterday or the day before. I just didn't feel like doing much. I can. I made that hot sauce the day before yesterday, and I did sweet potatoes yesterday, so I'm pretty much, I, I'm ready to get out and go today. I'm going to go down and check on some signs for my truck. And uh, some uniforms to wear. So I won't look like a shade tree mechanic when I pull up at your house. You 
got it. I, while you're ready, I mean, it's right here at the end of the end of the video. Why don't you go ahead and hit that like button, smash that button hard, and ring the bell, and uh, and get ready. I'm fixing to make another video this afternoon, and uh, it's going to be all about our our future plans and. Uh, our giveaway that we're, we're having so uh it's coming near i guarantee you i've got two subscribers but i've had 1500 uh facebook likes and uh as soon as the as soon as the rules get out on the giveaway then they're gonna be coming over and, and they're gonna all Subscribe, you know they are because that's the only reason they sent me Facebook requests. You know to like my page, and uh, you got to get on there and you got to like the page. You got to like my YouTube video. You got to like the, you got to hit the bell, the notification bell, and you got to to subscribe. And but I will go over all the rules this afternoon when I make my video. It's been about 10 minutes. So let's get it going. Yep, 42 seconds left. So this jiggler has a 5 pound, a 15 pound, and a 10 pound. We want to go, we're going to go for 90 minutes on 10 pounds. When this thing starts shaking and venting steam, that's when we start our timer. I believe I'm going to have another cup of coffee while we're waiting on that. I think I should be a good husband and put the dishes away. Yes, I should. I don't want to mess them all up yesterday. Sure wish I had some fresh cow's milk. Uh oh. We're out of that cream. Sure would like to have some sweet cream out of a cow. How about you guys? Y'all ever had that? No? I love it. You can tell I'm a pretty fat guy. Straight out of the percolator, right off the stove.
cleaning does not lie. Baby comes home with loving on her mind. Don't come home with drinking, with loving on your mind. <laughs> Won't be long now. So this will be a good time for you to subscribe. Be <clears throat> sure and watch those, watch those little short commercials that they have. I hate commercials, and I hate the fact that that YouTube puts commercials on there. But uh, as soon as I possibly can, I'll be advertising on YouTube to local customers. Hopefully, uh, real soon. Takes money. Takes money to make money. I'm afraid I'm gonna have to go take a job at the grocery store. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But these other people that can do that that can't do what I can do. If I got a job that they can do. I'm taking up place for them. How many of you retired? And you take up some little old job to make a few dollars after you retire? Working at Burger King or uh, at the convenience store or something like that just to have something to do. How many of you do that? Write it down in the comments below. This pandemic going on, there's a lot of people out of work. Uh, lots of people. I count my blessings every day. The Lord's been good to me through this pandemic. And I hope He continues to bless me. I know He will. get a chance go over and uh, visit brother Lonnie's website or uh, Facebook page of uh, uh, Calvary Temple Assembly of God uh, growth in Texas and uh, watch his videos uh, he does a lot of good things for our people here in town and for the kids and the boys home those those poor boys, well, I say poor boys, those boys that are at that at that home, they don't have a whole lot. We send peanut butter and cereal and chips and I don't know what all else Brother Lonnie's done for them, but I do know for a fact that this this year for Christmas he's doing uh, beds in a bag for them. So if you can. Make that man a check out and send it to him to the Calvary Temple Assembly of God in Groton, Texas. Uh, Brother Lonnie would appreciate it. Go to his, go to their page. You can find all the information you need to send that check. It don't have to be a lot. A few dollars. Five, ten dollars. You know, it all adds up. Every little penny. It helps. Small town. Groton's a small town. It's a large area. 
and he goes outside that area and helps kids. Uh, he's a school bus driver and janitor, and uh, also, and he he's a wonderful preacher. He is full of God, and uh, he blesses my life every Sunday. Waiting on the jiggler. There it goes, look. There it goes. Rocking right along. Alright, I'm going to set my timer for 90 minutes. set. You see what's going on? Every once in a while you might want to come in here and turn this down a little bit if it gets too exciting. I might have prematurely set my timer. There it goes. There we go. As it goes, it builds up a little bit more heat, a little bit more steam and pressure in there. You want to turn it down as you go, but you'll find that sweet spot. You got to keep that jiggler going. 90 minutes. And then let it cool. Turn the stove off, go outside, and, uh, and just... Go do whatever. Go to the store. After you turn this stove off, it's safe. It is. It's safe because it's going to do nothing but cool down. Uh, there ain't nothing you can do for it anyway because once you can't you can't touch it until the button goes down and all the pressure is off of it. All the pressure is off of it. When you notice that button down, even if you've been out in the yard for two hours uh, and you can walk in you notice that button's down, set your timer for 10 minutes. And come over here and sit down and uh, enjoy a cold glass of tea or something. And then uh, when the timer goes off, go over and pull the pull the weight off of it. And uh, just sit there. Let it set, set your timer again. Let it sit for 10 minutes. And then it's safe to open it. It is safe to open it then. Uh, but otherwise, you have doubts in your mind. What if that button just went down? There's still pressure in there. Uh, when you pop that lid loose and all that steam comes rushing out of there, it will hit you in the face. It will burn, scald you bad. And uh, that's the worst kind of burn you can have is steam burn. So whenever you pop that lid loose, you always want to pop it loose and flip it away from you. Let that steam go out in front of you. Use that lid as a block. Okay, guys. I've enjoyed it. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you later.